here and thank you so much for checking out this video. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down Stone Cold by Demi Lovato. So if you like today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click the subscribe button below because I would love to see you here more often. I have broken down this song into bite-sized pieces, utilizing sounds and sensations that will really help you navigate through both the verse and the chorus of this super crazy song. So think of these sounds and these sensations as kind of temporary coordinations to really get the ball rolling for you. Do not strive for a perfect, pretty, polished sound right away. We're gonna build up to that, okay? But think of these sensations as um, a kind of frame of reference to give you access to what is required for your voice in this song. Please be sure to watch the entire video. And then as you're practicing with this song, feel free to use the links below as kind of a quick reference tool to jump to some of your favorite parts. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we want to make sure that we address in a song such as this is a sense of tonal centered through placement. So placement is like saying, this is the song's home in my head space. And the objective with a tonal center placement is, you guessed it, to get the tone smack dab in the center of your head. What this will give your song is a sense of substance, presence, focus, and balance. So it's super important. And especially, like, I would like you to think of a song like this as the center being like a ball, okay? Everything kind of comes from this ball. So as the tone goes higher and lower, it kind of returns to the home. So now that we've talked about what a tonal center sort of placement is, I also want to say that everyone's acoustics inside of their head is totally unique to them. So you might need to experiment and kind of play to discover what really works best for you. The sensation that I'm going to demonstrate now is what works best for me. So this is how we're going to break it down. Flare your nostrils. And as you do, get a sense of space opening up in the front of your face. Mm-hmm. And give a little sass in the lips as well, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And even activate some sound, get it really moving forward. Mm-hmm. Good. We need to be able to move the tone to the front to get that centeredness of placement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So keep this space as active as you can. It's not attractive, I know, but it's all about access right now. So keep this space as active as you can as we hum the first line of the song. So here it is. Okay, here's our first note. Sassy, sassy, sassy. You know, like that kind of face and sound that adults tend to make as they catch a kid, like in a, in a tall tale. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Here we go. Humming. and open that space. Really get a sense, and if a visual really works for you, imagine a ball kind of resting on the inside where you notice all the vibrations are kind of collecting. That really works for me, I like to imagine that. So imagine them collecting as a ball in the center of your head through this space. And if you need to modify it to kind of open up because your face is different, feel free to kind of move around until you kind of feel that sweet spot. But now that we have a sense of activating the sound forward, let us keep that mm, 
space as active as we can. And we're going to kind of open the lips into a sort of fishy lip uh, kind of face. Not attractive, but, but do you remember what I said earlier as temporary coordinations? Good, this will help keep the ball rolling for you. So, flare nostrils, mm-hmm. Now open mouth space, uh, keeps the tone focused forward. So now we're just gonna kind of sing the words, but through fish lips, here we go. Stone cold, stone cold. You see me standing, but I'm dying on the floor. Stone cold, stone cold. Maybe if I don't cry, I won't feel anymore. Stone cold, feel it come forward, baby. God knows I try to feel. Can you feel that? Could you get a sense of it? Good. Again, if visuals work for you, keep that space open and imagine that all the vibrations are kind of collecting into a sense of a ball right in the center of your head. That's the objective. So now that we've kind of gone through the first verse, let us go through now with that same shape with music. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Keep it open and active in your experience. Good. Now this is the first verse. We know that the second verse gets a little crazier still, but this will give us a good something to build off of. Yes, building off of sound. So the objective is to feel that centeredness of tone utilizing placement. Very good. Now we're gonna move on now into the chorus and then we'll come back to the second verse in a different part of the video. Moving on to the chorus. Now we find ourselves in the chorus of the song and we know that the chorus is kind of like this main event. But the chorus does have a little something extra that the first verse didn't quite have. And that's the use of this nifty little resonating space known as the pharyngeal. Now the pharyngeal is this kind of area of our throat meeting our nose where everything kind of turns. And we wanna basically bounce our sound off of that corner there. When this is done effectively, it takes all the pressure off the throat and adds a saucy expansion to our, to our singing. So who doesn't want that? In order to feel this, just kind of smile and kind of hold in a laugh. Like it's the funniest thing you've ever heard. Like, ha! Can you feel that not only is it opening, but there's some lifting that's happening back there? Ha! Ha! Good, 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 good. So stretch it. Laugh a little. Ha, ha, ha. Good. And that will give you a little bit of a sense of it. Now, there is a benefit of a word, happy, when we go into the chorus. Happy for you. So that ha is one of the broadest sounds that we have in our language, really, really broad. And think of your tone being initiated right in that corner that I was talking about. So let's feel that. So let's go ha, 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 like ha, 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 ha. Good, feel that. Ha, 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 ha. Good, you'll need to be very picky about intonating right there because the desire to go happy is very great very great it's 
It's tricky, isn't it? We'll almost need to think that we're coming at the sound from being above it, and then we're going to integrate some depth and some drama as an effect later on. Right now, we're just getting a sense of it. Ha! 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 So kind of bounce on ha with me. Ha! 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 ha. Vary your pitches just to keep it interesting. Ha! Good. And again, be very curious about that spot. There's a lot going on right there. And another really great thing about pharyngeal that I forgot to mention a second ago um, is it overlaps registration in such a cool way. Such a cool way. So really make it a point to explore up and back. Ha! 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 Just do a couple slides with me. Play, 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 poke, poke, poke. Ha! 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 It's not just up there, it's up there and lift. Good. So let us nice and slow, kind of at a medium level dynamic, just get a sense of pharyngeal chorus. So for example, happy for you. You'll want to kind of isolate this spot in everything that you do. Let's try this together. Here we go. Happy for you, know that I am, even if I'll take the pain. Now remember earlier in the video where I really encouraged you not to go for a pretty, perfect, polished sound right away. What we're doing here is we are kind of exploring speech in the pharyngeal. Now notice how I'm not going happy, I'm not shouting at you. I'm just really allowing that resonance to kind of happen at a medium level dynamic. And the more comfortable you become, the, the, the louder that you will get. As simple as that. Good. So now let's try that uh, one more time and then we'll try it with music. But I really want you to think like smile, keep that sensation very active and almost like that feeling of like I'm holding in a laugh just to feel the lift back there because it makes speaking from that spot very easy. Okay, here we go. Happy for you. Good, good, good. Very, very good. I love the use of the openness up at the top there. So now we're going to try it with music. Again, medium level dynamic. Feel the sensation of the speech in the pharyngeal while you're singing. Here we go. Good, very good. My hope with this portion of the video is again that you just feel that sensation of sending everything up and back into the pharyngeal. Very good job. Now let's move on.
So now we've come into the final portion of today's breakdown video. And I've lovingly entitled this portion, Adding Edge. But I wanna first say that when I do a breakdown of a song, I kinda of look at it in terms of what qualities are present and how might we activate and isolate each sensation so that we can later go in and layer our experience. So think of each song that you sing as kind of like a painting. There is a background, a subject, and then a foreground, right? Or like detailed work. So, so far, we've had the tonal center in terms of placement as our background. That should be consistent throughout the entire song. Tone must be established first before we can add all the craziness to it. Then we isolate and activate that expansion through the use of pharyngeal. Now we're gonna work with chord compression and that will effectively give edge and kind of a little bit more artistic style into the piece. Because this song is, in, is incredibly compressy, which means that feeling of cry is, is, is a part of it. But we need to have first that tone and that balance established so that when we start to integrate chord compression into the mix, we're able to hold that placement without it going all over the place. So what I'd like for you to do to get a sense of chord compression is first open the throat. With that open throat feeling, kind of ah, 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 kind of sob a little bit. And if you want to give like a little frown, that's totally fine by me. It's like a little bit of a character, right? And again, this song is all about that kind of emotion, like that sense of loss. So that should be reflected in the way that we deliver the sound as well. So, but only when you're ready, once you've got that feeling of tonal center through placement and then the use of the pharyngeal and totally mastered it, then you can move on to edge. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna play with the second verse because it tends to get a little a little, a little crazier than the first verse, but let us see what we mean and where that's applicable. But as you cry, remember to keep your throat open. So what we're gonna do is go nice and slow through the second verse. Here we go. Stone cold, stone cold, you're dancing with her while I'm staring at my phone. Stone that will give you something to hold on to and add a little bit of that punch. Let's try that together. That whole first part. Here we go. Stone cold, stone cold. You're dancing with her while I'm staring at my phone. Stone cold, stone cold. I was your And then stone cold, baby, really cry. I don't do that to be obnoxious, and I'm sorry if that comes across annoying, but really cry to feel that, first of all, having, all, having done all that tonal work, it should go right there so that when you cry, it really goes there. So let's try that stone cold. Let's do that nice and slow. Here we go, ready? Stone cold, baby. Again. Stone cold, baby. Yeah, yeah, really feel that. Now let's try that with the music. Now we're just adding that sob into our already well-established tone placement. Your 
She goes, for the sake of time, we won't really go get into runs or anything, but did you feel that, baby? Good, now you basically wanna, once having a foundation of the tonal centeredness of the song, you just wanna go back and very slowly start to add a little bit of that cry. Now the, the reason I emphasize like adding it incrementally and in little pieces is for the benefit of your placement. If that is not second nature, everything's going to want to pull back into the throat and then we're kind of stuck there. So think of it in terms of like a finishing effect. Okay, now the same applies to the chorus, so we won't necessarily need to go back and redo the chorus, but you can use that sense of cry um, to keep you your tone edgy and punchy and saucy. Good, very, very good. So let's move on to our final thoughts for today's video. So there we have it guys, the three coordinations that we need in order to effectively sing Stone Cold by Demi Lovato. And they are, one more time, tonal center through use of placement, the use of pharyngeal, and then adding edge through the cry or chord compression. If you practice each of these individually, you'll be able to add them together and sing this song really, really, really well. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you've liked today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up or click the subscribe button below. I would love to see you here more often. And if you have any questions or would like for me to break down a song for you, please be sure to leave it in the comments portion of today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I have loved having you and I will see you next time. Bye.